Hi everybody, Scott here from the Introvert Power channel. In this video, I'm going to give an INFJ's take of ENTPs. Now, one word people often use to describe the ENTP is visionary. However, uh, I think what's unique about ENTPs is that they are the vision. Whereas, you know, people might say, oh, you know, so-and-so carries the vision um, or, you know, the, the other types that, you know, state the vision in the sense of, you know, this is, this is the goal, these are the points and like in quite a bit of detail, the ENTP essentially encapsulates the vision. So it's like they, they speak, eat, breathe, think, action the vision. I think for people that um, you know work for ENTPs, it, that's that can be a sort of a helpful way of seeing them, um, because often there's not a lot of structure that comes from uh, from them. So um, you can kind of get a sense of the direction of things by observing them, that they are essentially sort of actualizing the vision by being themselves. So it's like ENTPs. Uh, they're like a one-person symphony. It's like they, they, they are a symphony. In, in a way, what I mean, it's like their ideas, all of their ideas come together to form um, a, a piece of music. And I, when I think of them, I sort of picture like those old antique record players with the, with the speaker that sort of comes out the side. Um, however, it's like that that funnel um, is absorbing ideas. It's taking in information into the um, into the speaker or whatever that thing's called. You know the the funnel. Um, it's like it comes into into them, and then sort of travels down to the needle, and the it's like the needle and the groove in the record player is like their introverted thinking. It's kind of like where everything gets synthesized. It's where everything comes together. That that TI um, form formulates it formulates all of those ideas into a piece of music, and uh, i.e. the vision, and the like the groove in the record player. Um, for a healthy ENTP is kind of like keeps that that music on track it keeps it uh, it, it keeps that that piece of music um, on track like you know going going along the groove the funnel is like NE and the needle is TI where it formulates all of those ideas into a piece of music and then and then in a sense that record player if you like um, and and everything that it does uh, with that piece of music is um, the is the ENTP. So it's like it comes in, it's formulated into into a piece of music, and then it goes out of them in just who they are. ENTPs are are known for their for being individuals, for you know prizing autonomy, and I think that's what helps them to kind of carry uh, their vision, carry their their symphony, is their ability to sort of stand alone. Uh, carrying their piece of music, carrying uh, who they are. And it's like I kind of picture an ENTP, like if you picture them sort of walking down the street, um, playing their piece of music, being themselves, being their, uh, being the vision. And they, they come across people that, that might have a piece of music that fits their symphony. And, and, and it's like they can just naturally sort of see the other person's um, uh, giftings or abilities and see how that can play into the ENTP symphony and will kind of just naturally want to gather them into um, sort of playing a part in the symphony and um, could gather all sorts of different people around them to play their various piece of music. Um, and I think when that happens for for people, for for people that have that happen to them, uh, it can happen very naturally. It's because the ENTP is speaking into um, a truth 
and an ability in the other person. And so they can naturally just come on board and, and play a part in the ENTP's vision. Um, and the ENTP is very intentional about that. However, they can be, um, they can, you, it's kind of like when you've got six or seven um, violinists, you, you, can, you can replace one uh, or you can take one out and you wouldn't notice a huge amount of difference. And so the ENTP can, can, can easily, um, can sort of easily dismiss somebody, somebody's part um, when, it, when they sort of sense that it does, it's either not needed in the symphony or somebody else can replace that, um, that part quite easily. Um, and so a person can kind of find themselves not in that symphony um, anymore, uh, quite easily. And I don't want to say that from like a, um, like ENTPs, uh, uh, conniving or manipulative or malicious or anything like that. I don't think there's any ill intent, um, when an ENTP either gathers someone in to support the vision or, you know, sort of naturally moves on from a person, uh, who, who might've been playing a part, um, or just maybe the NTP doesn't see that, that maybe they had the role uh, in the symphony that they thought they would have in, in the vision, that they thought they would have. And so the NTP can easily just move on um, without too much, w without any real um, worry or distress. For people that that can happen to, that could be, that could feel hurtful, that could feel um, discarded um, or overlooked. But I don't think it's like a, a deliberate rejection. I think it's just um, like I think it's all about intent. I don't think the the ENTP in those environments is intentionally wanting to reject or um, you know get rid of sort of thing. I think the the ENTP just moving forward in their vision and continuing along the their path. Uh, however, I think it's probably worthwhile. Uh, ENTP is just recognizing that they could have that impact on somebody else, um, that they could feel both highly prized one minute and not, not really valued the next uh, or down the track, just because of the ENTP sort of actualizing themselves in their vision and uh, people come and go um, from that vision as the as the ENTP sort of uh, is building their their vision building and sort of playing out um, their piece of music. And I think ENTPs are really sensitive to that, that um, piece of music that they're carrying, the vision that they are, that they are and are carrying, very sensitive to um, an idea that doesn't quite fit, uh, a, a, in a sense, an instrument that doesn't quite fit or is no longer fitting. So if ENTPs, um, if their vision is kind of like a symphony, like an orchestra, then they'll be really sensitive. Um, it's like their core is the conductor, and they'll be very sensitive when when a, when an idea is not working, when um, when a part of their logical system um, is no longer working, or there's something better to replace it. Uh, very sensitive to that. So it's kind of like. Um, using the the orchestra metaphor, it's like they can they can take an instrument out, i.e., an idea out, um, a part of their system out, and put something else in to replace that. That will make the symphony sound better and be um, uh, and play itself out better. I.e., um, their vision and their direction will. Better, act, better actualize when they make those tweaks. So they're very sensitive to when the system is out of whack and will very naturally seek to correct that very quickly. Maybe even most likely before anybody even notices that the symphony, uh, like, like something's not working in the piece of music. Um, you know, before anyone notices that something's wrong uh, in the system, they've already addressed. They're already addressing it. I think ENTPs, as as children growing up, are very much very much disadvantaged by the school system. I think it essentially doesn't fit them in most cases, and um, and I think 
a way of explaining that is ENTPs require breadth of of freedom and um, an ability to gather in all sorts of information. And I think often the school system is kind of pu pushes people into boxes and say, okay, you're going to learn this and you're going to learn that. And in any subject, in a sense, the ENTP will want to kind of branch out and explore um, and will be constantly being pushed to like be disciplined, you know, and um, focus on, on the task at hand. And I think that could be very exasperating for an ENTP growing up in that sort of system. And I think it's it's like they'll just build up um, agitation, like energy that needs to be um, uh, expelled through their NE is building up because they're constantly being forced into um, participating in activities that are either uninteresting um, or limiting in their uh, limiting their ability to, ability to explore, and I think that can be one of the reasons that sort of build up of frustration and energy can end up, especially for male ENTPs, um, uh, being very restless, very irritable, uh, frustrated, and that that it's, that energy's got to go somewhere, and if it's not able to sort of be spent through their NE exploration then it's probably going to be acted out in some other way and that's where they could be very fidgety um, you know it's like their body has to sort of expel the energy that their NE is not able to um, exercise and um, and that could come across as like you know being very disruptive in the classroom uh, undisciplined um, all these sorts of things and could even in extreme cases um, or in unfortunate cases be misdiagnosed with ADHD um, uh, because they're not they're really standing out in the classroom um, uh, for the negative behaviors that they're exhibiting uh, however they're exhibiting those negative behaviors because they're essentially being like handcuffed to an idea or a um, handcuffed to ideas and um, subjects and a, and a system that is very limiting for them. And while I think ENTPs essentially do survive that um, environment most of the time because of because they're quite strong people, um, I, I think if if any the, the sooner an ENTP can be typed as a child and an environment created for them to explore and develop, the, the, the more of a powerhouse they'll be in their lives and then in the lives of those around them going forward. And that's why I think, you know, homeschooling can sometimes be an option for people um, that, uh, that are in this situation because it, um, the homeschooling can allow some freedom to explore um, and to think and process in a way that comes more naturally. I think an ENTP can survive that school environment when they've got a healthy home environment where they're able to be themselves and explore who they are and explore ideas and, and just map all that out in their NE. Um, however, however, I think when an ENTP has a, a, a limiting school environment and a limiting home environment, now, we're, now we've got some real problems in regards to development. But I think it can go in one of two ways. One way, it's like they could either under underdevelop um, either their NE or their TI. So an underdeveloped NE will essentially lead to you know, um, not enough information coming in to formulate those ideas. They're kind of like, rather than um, kind of skyscraper ideas, you know, if a skyscraper is a representation of of their system. If they've got underdeveloped NE, it's kind of like they've just been able to develop the scaffolding around um, the structure of the building, um, but haven't been able to really kind of lay out the floor and, and fill out the rooms with, with their thoughts and ideas. It's kind of like just the scaffolding is there. Um, which means they're, 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 their ideas are um, unfinished essentially their system um, their vision if you like that they carry is unfinished 
on the other side of that is if their TI isn't developed um, enough, then they're bouncing around a whole lot of ideas, not being able to sort of funnel all of that information into their TI to kind of um, break it all down and and in a sense fill that skyscraper with ideas and 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 furniture and all the things that make up uh, you know a useful skyscraper um, so they can be really bouncing around ideas and and not um, and getting excited about each idea without um, really um, filling those ideas out um, and I think that's where the the ADHD um, um, misdiagnosis if you like can come in just the way it looks from the outside and using the uh, record the antique record player analogy um, for someone with um, underdeveloped um, and any anti it's kind of like that the the groove that the the needle sits in is jumping around a lot on on the record you know jumping to different tracks different jumping to different ideas and and not able to sort of take a, a, a sort of a whole range of ideas into that ti to 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 break it all down to formulate a um, a whole if you like like a whole song a whole symphony a whole piece of music it's um you know getting all different sorts of uh well different sorts of songs different um, in different keys um, different directions, if you like, and uh, different sounds, and it's just a sort of a, a gobbledygook mess. So, uh, on one hand, when an, when an, an ENTP is growing up, um, where a school environment is restricting them and a home life is restricting them, that can lead to a, those underdeveloped functions and it sort of playing itself out like that. However, I think there's a uh, the flip side to that is um, it can this sort of environment can actually help an ENTP to to grow if you like and actualize in the sense that when uh, when an ENTP is bored um, uh, unfulfilled which I would say a child ENTP would be in those environments it's like they because of their autonomy and their and their kind of natural intelligence, it's like they're actually able to play with it. They're able to play with the the systems that aren't working for them, and um, uh, in a sense, the system is creating problems for them. But then there's their problems for them to solve, um, and whether it's in the school system or in the home environment, it can kind of create problems for them to overcome, which then helps to develop their functions. So often school environments and work environments are all about rules, regulations, restrictions, uh, and this, this sort of thing. And I think for, for, I mean, I think for a lot of people, I think for a lot of people, um, those rules, regulations, and all of that help to develop productivity. It's like, okay, these are the rules, these are the boundaries, this is the structure, okay, and this is my task, and so I'm going to be really pr productive in this task that I'm doing. I think it's often the reverse for, for ENTPs. I think all of the, the more regulations, restrictions, rules, and all of that leads to a less productivity, less ideas, le less, product, um, less creativity and problem solving. So it's like the ENTP require like the less restriction, the less rules and regulations, restrictions and, and all of that, the less structure, essentially, um, the more they're able to function, the more they're able to to be productive and and develop their their um, their role in if they're working in a company. Um, sort of the more freedom they're given, the, the better workers they're most likely going to be. The more restricting the rule, the role is, then the more bored or frustrated the ENTP is going to be, and that's where they kind of start to create problems in the workplace to then be able to overcome them and solve them. Which seems to be kind of a humorous thing that they do, that they actually are like, I'm bored, I'm going to kind of put my job on the line to have a bit of fun and kind of work out how to then 
you know, save my role in the job or something like this. It's quite humorous when I think about it. Um, dangerous in, in a way, depending on potentially dangerous um, or at least uncomfortable for those around them and potentially uncomfortable for a spouse who might be seeing this taking place and pushing their security buttons when the ENTP is kind of, you know, riding really close to the edge. Um, but I think that's where ENTPs, uh, there's an excitement there that gets them cre gets them in a creative space, sort of creating new ways of solving problems that kind of, you know, help build who they are. So a bit like, you know, ENTPs um, don't need a lot of detail to kind of grab onto an idea and run with it. I think it's similar in the workplace or even in the school environment that um, you, you just kind of give them a bit of a sniff of what's required and then leave them alone, leave them to, to create, leave them to, um, to, do, to, to build their knowledge base and, and produce. Moving on to r marital relationships, um, with ENTPs, you know, being, being the inventor, uh, being the visionary, um, and they're, they're acting out that vision, often there's a lot of, a lot of uh, pressure or uh, expectation on their spouse to, to keep the, the home environment functioning. Uh, uh, they, there's a tendency for ENTPs to sort of um, uh, overlook the, the daily the, the daily routines, the, the, the things that, you know, the washing, the this, the that, you know, the, the home duties are often overlooked, which can be a source of conflict and tension in a, in a home environment. However, it's certainly not laziness or a lack of love or appreciation. It really comes down to an ENTP's way of being. Uh, it's certainly helpful for an ENTP to become aware of that um, that being of who they are and make some adjustments to um, be more, um, uh, I guess, productive in the home life as well, um, because that will then lead to uh, a greater connection in the relationship. Even though the ENTP doesn't see that there is a problem in the relationship because things are functioning well, at least from, from their perspective, um, making those adjustments can really be uh, beneficial to the spouse who may be feeling neglected or may be feeling um, uh, missed uh, in, um, in the ENTP's um, uh, life. And it's interesting that ENTPs, once they've chosen someone that they, they want to spend their lives with, they, it's like they express their love to them. Uh, and and then let's get on with it. Let's get on with, with building our life. And that really works for an ENTP, but often not for a spouse. Um, um, th that frequent expression of love is often needed for, uh, for the spouse. Um, however, um, for an ENTP to kind of re-express that commitment or that that love for them feels like it 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 comes across as uh they're wavering you know it's like they're trying to talk themselves into it um or trying to suggest that they've got doubt about the relationship so in a sense it's like ENTPs don't communicate it frequently um because to them that would come across as that they don't love them uh, or that they've got doubt about loving them. Whereas the fact, the real, reality for the other person is them not saying it for the other person, it feels like doubt. For the other person, it feels as though they're doubting that the, they think the ENTP doesn't love them or uh, doesn't love them enough. So again, for an ENTP to kind of recognize that and, and adjust a little bit to expressing that more frequently um, for the for the need of the other person can again be a very much a bonding experience uh, and and help with that um, marital connection, especially for the other person. And I think that's where uh, an ENTP's 
uh, tertiary FE function comes in is about um, by making those adjustments is kind of encouraging that that third function to to be in tune with the other. It's kind of like you could almost say the FE is like the relationship function for the ENTP. You know, trying to trying to just strengthen its ability to hone in on the emotional reality that others might be experiencing and and. And it, the more an ENTP is able to pick up the emotional reality of others, the better their relationships will be in their personal life. Their their vision and their um, and their inventing, if you like, will pretty much take care of itself in their NE and TI uh, if it's developed. It's it, it in a sense that isn't the problem. It's only the problem when that third function is being neglected and it's kind of like yeah it's like the relationship function so learning to tune in emotionally to the realm of the other person will kind of part of the actualization of the ENTP sort of building those closer relationships uh, and tuning into them a little more like listening to that FE if you like uh, I think the introverted sensing and fury function operates very similar to the um, to the e ENFP um, in the fact that they both have introverted sensing as their uh, inferior function. So I'll leave a link to that video uh, where I go into the inferior SI function um, for the ENFP. But to just maybe talk a little bit about it here, um, for, the, for the ENFP, uh, TP, that introverted sensing function, it's it's kind of, because it's inferior, it's like the, the ENTP is like an, they're having an out-of-body experience most of the time when they're in their vision and ideas, where they, so the more they're not in their body, if you like, the, the greater they're able to um, actualize who they are, actualize their vision. However, um, what, it's like they the, the ENTP needs to stay somewhat connected to their body, otherwise it'll have that um, in the grip SI reaction. It'll it'll bite back essentially. So it's like the discipline of the ENTP is remaining, keeping like one foot in their body, if you like, and the rest of them out in their vision and um, uh, in actualizing their vision. Otherwise, their body will bite back. They'll have you know, potentially somatic, you know, body um, um, issues, potential burnout by not taking care of the body, not having enough rest and downtime. And I think part of the ENF, sorry, ENTP's um, growth and actualization is that T that SI is kind of like can be stay connected to by participating in some routine in the family home um, if they're if they're in, if they're married or in a relationship so participating in the routine of of life even if it's just a little bit um, is both going to develop the relationship because there'll be the appreciation of the ENTP being involved in the family home uh, but also um, it will help the uh, I think it'll help the ENTP to be a bit more in the present. Uh, it's sort of it's like it's in the present because I know SI is sort of more about the past, but I think it's also about doing you know that that whole thing of doing things the way it's always been done. You know, which goes utterly against the ENTP. So, you know, participating in some daily routine which you could say is like an SI, um, is part of SI, kind of helps to keep them somewhat, a little bit grounded. It's going to improve the, the, the home functionality. It's going to improve the relationship at home. It's going to keep them in their body to some extent, which will then um, help them to stay connected and not lose sight of um, uh lose touch, I guess, with their body, which will help to uh, avoid burnout um, or av avoid either real or imagined, if you like, um, physical ailments that the 
will come through when the when the body is um, feeling neglected. Just in regards to the shadow function, uh, the the sixth shadow function in extroverted thinking, it's like you know the ENTP doesn't like being told what to do. Um, very much prizes um, autonomy and you know, being an individual. I wonder if when a an ENTP has um, has it like almost like a sixth function in the group reaction. If it's like they become like a dictator, um, instead of you know sort of actualizing their their vision very actively but non aggressively. I think that's one thing I've noticed about ENTPs is that I wouldn't say that they're aggressive or pu pushy in the sense of. Um, dictatorial. I think they they develop people's enthusiasm and um, and speak to people's strengths and their abilities. And so people naturally want to come on board with the NTP. However, I wonder sometimes if they're really stressed um, and they're feeling backed into a corner, if they can sort of tap into that shadow function and become very very dictatorial through a TE shadow function, become very hostile and 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 aggressive um, in the sense of being more direct about getting things done as opposed to influence and inspiration uh, inspiring people to get things done and I would think that ENTPs may have a hard time with TE dominant um, bosses or or parents where um, also I think if they're um, if they're sensor thinkers. So I think potentially with like ESTJs, um, uh, with their dominant TE, that um, there could be a lot of, com potentially a lot of conflict um, if the ESTJ is, is being very directive in their style of either parenting or managing, which then just pushes on the autonomy and individualness of the ENTP and the ENTP wants to wants to fight back, wants to react to that. Um, so I think that's just something to be mindful of. One thing that ENTPs do as parents um, is they, because of that high value of individualization, very much wants to promote that both in in their children but also in their spouse. They they want everybody around them to be standing on their own two feet. Um, being self-reliant, independent, and able to both um, identify issues and problems and resolve them and deal with them themselves. It's kind of like, um, perhaps for other other types, may, you know, especially more feeling types, when someone around them has an issue, um, the, a feeler is going to sort of want to bring that person in as a way of support and help. Whereas an ENTP is like, you know, I don't want to do that. I don't want you to become dependent on me. I don't want you to, um, um, like the NTP will see that as potentially straight jacketing, um, either their spouse or their, um, their children, you know, hampering and, um, uh, their development. So an ENTP will, through love, if you like, will want to, respect their autonomy and and leave them over there to to work it out it's like uh, they love by leaving them to sort it out uh, whereas feel is love by bringing them in to help them sort of comfort them so that they can sort it out neither's better or worse than the other or right or wrong it's just really helpful to right be Id identifying the style not misinterpreting it as a lack of love um, because an ENTP will see a, potentially see a feel of bringing, you know, empathizing and bringing the person in and, and, and cuddling them, if you like, or just, you know, um, bringing them closer as potentially, um, they wouldn't use the word unloving, but it's kind of like they could see it that way is like you're, 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 um, uh, you know, the ENTP could see that as you're not letting them grow, you're not letting them develop, you know, it's it's not a healthy thing to do, it's not the right thing to do, let them sort it out. And the feel is probably going to say, I am letting them sort it out, 
um, but I, I want to, I, my emotional connection wants to bring them in for, to, to sort of comfort them, to let them know that, that, that I'm here, that I'm with you. Whereas the ENTP says, um, letting you stay over there to sort it out is letting you know that I'm with you, potentially. If you're not an ENTP, you, you, you may or may not have picked up a vulnerability in ENTPs. And um, it's like when you look closely at an ENTP, it's like they carry this insecurity, this vulnerability. And I don't think that's necessarily the case for all ENTPs and sort of there'll be more to less degree of it. But I think that insecurity is this constant awareness and, and look out for errors in their logical system. It's um, they both um, value their logical structures and systems and for the ENTP their vision but there's there's always this sort of lingering doubt that there's something not quite right to the system which is both um, like I think interesting that there's both confidence and insecurity about their system and structure but I think at the same time that lingering doubt or um, insecurity about their system helps them to sort of stay humble to their to their process which is not probably a word people would use to describe ENTPs but it's like their their sense of doubt about their own system is like a humility that keeps them open to potential errors so that they can correct them which then helps to continue to perfect their system so it's like that insecurity works for them it uh it helps them to um, continue to evolve. Part of that insecurity is about, I, I think is about one of their greatest fears is having others, others around them see the whole in their system or structure. So like I was describing with the symphony, oftentimes not, other people aren't aware of a problem um, in the system uh, because the ENTP is onto it the moment they recognise that there's something not quite right. So they'll, they'll, they'll tweak it, they'll perfect it, they'll sort it out very quickly. But I think their greatest fear, or one of their greatest fears, is having their system fall down to the point, of, to, to the point where the audience notices. So it's kind of like, um, you know, like, um, you know, seven people seven people's stringed instruments all break at once and there's a clear problem with the sound um, and the audience picks up on it. Um, that being a metaphor to um, an ENTP's vision um, suddenly falling down um, in, in some way and having others recognise it is deeply embarrassing and humiliating for, for an ENTP. They, they try and avoid that at all costs. I think it's probably fair to say that ENTP females have their own very unique challenges because in one respect the everything that I've described about ENTPs is um, traditionally um, and stereotypically being put in the male category versus female category and so now we've got ENTP females who exhibit a lot of traditionally or stereotypically male traits, but they're females. And so um, that can be both challenging for ENTP females and their, and their partners and their spouses. It's kind of like got to reinvent um, that stereotype because it can be, there's both cultural and societal uh, stereotypes that kind of will judge the ENTP female as being um, uh, you know, unsubmitted to the to their partner or um, uh, too 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 male, too logical, uh, not not empathic enough. All of these sorts of things, and no, most likely the ENTP will find um, a spouse that does carry that that female, uh, sorry that 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 feeling element, uh, maybe that more nurturing side. 
um, which you could say, you know, could be the INFJ. So we've got an INFJ male. Um, INFJ males have their own challenges because a lot of the INFJ traits you could um, are stereotypically considered female. So INFJ males have their own set of challenges. Um, but for ENTP females, oh, let's say that if we've got an INFJ in an uh, an in an ENTP and an INFJ relationship, um, they essentially need to um, address, potentially need to address that and, and see it that they're not going to be the cliche uh, husband and wife dynamic. Um, but that doesn't make it wrong or that doesn't mean they need to bend themselves out of shape. In a sense, they, it's about sort of accepting uh, each accepting who they are, seeing the strengths and vulnerabilities of each of uh, each of their type, and making it work, working together. However, I, I think for and for the ENTP INFJ couple, um, the the problem essentially exists outside of them. Um, the the cultural and uh, societal expectations and stereotypes that that they may feel. Um, pushing them to look a different way. I think remove that um, that societal expectation and the ENTP female is very comfortable and the INFJ would be very comfortable with the female ENTP being themselves, being who they are and vice versa, the INFJ male being able to be who they are. There can be additional problems, however, when the ENTP female feels they have to um, bend themselves out of shape because for whatever reason they've sort of judged themselves as not being female or the INFJ males you know judging themselves as not being male enough uh, because they're not exerting the the stereotypical traits and and that that can be problematic for a couple that are doing that to themselves and I think there's a journey for a couple that is doing that to embrace who they are um, see that they are, are a, they are a unique blend and a unique um, they're unique in in their um, in who they are and that actually the expression of that could be quite a quite a beautiful thing um, and uh, there can be a lot of benefits that can come out of that non-stereotypical dynamic so my hope is that ENTPs watching um, have resonated with what I'm saying. Certainly would welcome sort of feedback if you feel as though the video is on point or maybe there's areas that aren't on point. Um, and I really hope that um, those that have ENTPs uh, in their life would hopefully get something out of this video in regards to how they see the ENTP um, in their lives going forward. So I wonder what it is that you appreciate about ENTPs. Feel free to leave your comments in the description. I appreciate it if you found some aspect of this video uh, illuminating or helpful um, or insightful that you would uh, give the video a thumbs up, even share the video around to, uh, to those that you think might benefit from the video. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you in another video.